Hey, what's up, y'all? Back with another episode of Is It Finally Worth Playing? Now, this is a series where I take a look at games with trouble launches after numerous patches or price drops. And for this game, we're going to be looking at the price drop. I was able to pick this up for $14 or $15, and this kind of goes into my budget of under $20. I would have liked to have found it a little bit cheaper, but, you know, like I said, under $20. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hop right into the bad like I always do for full transparency. One of the things that really like hopped out at me immediately was the voice acting and the overall writing. Both of them are pretty low quality and it's one of those things to where it's so bad it's good. But make no mistake about it, it is still very bad. I'm going to let you guys hear it for yourself and judge it for yourself. Now, it is, like I said, there's a little bit of charm to it, but it's still, it's still bad. It's still really bad. Just what the hell was that, Lieutenant? We fucked it all up? No. You fucked it all up. What the hell were you thinking? I don't know, Cap. Standard police procedure? Stop playing dumb with me, girl. We're in deep shit. Dell Synthetics is about to pull the plug. What? They want to take you down. And the rest of the team. I don't understand. Aside from the voice acting, I also experienced numerous technical issues. In the second half of the game, I ran into a lot of bugs and glitches, and throughout the entire game, I experienced screen tearing and frame rate dips. All right, now let's talk about the combat. This is one of the most important aspects of this game, and I'm going to be honest, it's on my good and bad list, but let's go ahead and get into the bad first. The main problem I have with this game's combat is you have tanky enemies that literally just break the flow of combat. Now, this has been classified as a hybrid slasher shooter, and that is when the game is at its absolute best, when you're able to mix and match you know, the hack and slash elements with the cover shooting. The problem is that the game simply won't allow you to do that at times. There are numerous uh, demi-bosses and just hard enemies that will pull you into the melee combat. And the biggest problem with that is you start with basically nothing. And even after maxing the tree out, Hannah is considerably weaker than Ryu from Ninja Gaiden. To further elaborate on this, you only get three combos in the entire game, even after maxing out the skill tree. And when it comes to the skill tree, you have to unlock abilities that are given to you from the start in other games. If they had have stuck to the shooter slasher hybrid, I feel like this wouldn't have been as much of a problem. But there are numerous sections in this game to where they expect you to rely solely on the hack and slash elements. And it is so underdeveloped and undercooked. And it, I'm be honest, it's not hard. It just feels bad. You find yourself just running around spamming the same two, three combos. And that's it. That's the entire, you know section there's not really much skill to it now there is parry that's kind of iffy in my opinion but honestly like i said you're really just spamming the combos and waiting for your you know your chance to unload my last two complaints against this game are its level design and story both of them are severely lacking in my opinion the level design is very archaic like i've heard people say this feels like a playstation 3 game maybe a super super early ps3 game like the launch title uh the genji I, th I can't remember what was the name of that one exactly, but maybe like the, the Genji launch title. But honestly, this feels like a PlayStation 2 game to me. The level design is insanely simplistic. You're mainly just running through levels, gunning people down and slicing people up. That is the entire game. Now, there is some mini games to kind of break up the monotony. But as far as the meat of the game, you're going forward, you know, clearing rooms, shooting people, cutting people. And the checkpoint system feels like something straight out of a PlayStation 2 game as well. There are numerous times to where you'll die and you're going to be taken right back to the very start of the level or a mission. And it is annoying. It is annoying as hell. But, you know, like I said, it kind of adds to this overall charm of feeling like a modern PlayStation 2 game. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword. Now, as for the story, it's told in a really confusing way, and in my opinion, it just feels like it's not finished. I'm going to give you guys a heads up. This game ends on a cliffhanger, and it just feels like they literally just said, you know what? We're out of money. Let's put it out. 
it's just really weird. I feel like they wasted a lot of time with the uh, Hannah just hanging out with their squad, you know, with zombie squad. And I don't really have a problem with that if they had have like done it once or twice, but you know, obviously this was this game was intended to be longer and it shows in the story and it shows in the story pacing. Another thing I thought that was weird about this story was it's supposed to take place in Hong Kong, but there are numerous references to just American pop culture and just, you know, obviously I felt like this was a very western leaning game in general. And it's like I feel like the, you know, the setting of China is kind of wasted here. And like obviously you are definitely still in China, but I mean like as far as from from what I saw nobody spoke Chinese. You know, most of the zombie squad is, you know, comprised of Americans. I think uh the the gunsmith might be Japanese, but it's like it's it's just weird. It's like why is this in China again? <laughs> All right, now we can finally talk about the good. This game takes me back in time to the double A PS2 era. It reminds me of some of the random Japanese games I gambled on in my youth at GameStop. You know, sadly, the game design is still trapped in that era also, but I feel like that kind of just adds to the charm. This game has, like, this undeniable dated charm about it that, like, just kind of works. It feels like it's a modern PlayStation 2 game, in my opinion. I also really enjoyed the shooter-slasher gameplay hybrid. It honestly feels like nothing else on the market. It has a very unique feeling to it once everything starts to click with you. And you feel like an action movie badass. It's cool because you can honestly say like there's nothing else on the market like Wanted Dead when it's, you know, at its peak. The only problem is I felt like this drew more attention to the sections that you solely were expected to use melee. And it made them feel even worse by comparison because once you experience the fluidity of the hybrid, it's kind of crazy that they actually try to draw away from that. I was also pleasantly surprised with the gun customization. Now you cannot upgrade the secondary weapons that you find within the levels, but I still like the fact that you can upgrade your primary assault rifle and your handgun. It actually added a nice little bit of depth and it was pretty cool how they uh, gave you parts pretty frequently. My only issue is I felt like they could have spaced it out a little bit because I, I think like the last, what, the last half of the game, the last 20% of the game, you start finding like no parts for your weapons. Whereas, you know, in the, the first 80% of the game, you're bombarded with parts. I also really like the finishers. I feel like it helped piece together the overall idea of the hybrid slasher shooter. But all in all, I feel like this game just could not get out of its own way. I really wanted to like it. There are sections and segments that I do like. But as a whole, this is a heavily flawed game. Uh, I just feel like if they had have reworked a lot of sections, if they just had to put more into the melee combat, three combos, man, three combos, that is one of the main things that is the biggest drawback to this game. On top of that, too, I feel like they should have reworked the skill tree. I just don't understand why they put so little into the melee combat, and then they basically made it a mainstay for multiple segments throughout the game. It's just weird. It's like, why would you lean on something that you clearly underdeveloped? I just don't understand it. Now, honestly, I feel like your enjoyment of this is going to come out of the type of games you like and the type of investment you make into this game. I'm going to be honest, like I told you guys at the beginning of the video, I spent 14 on this. I'm going to say it's okay for 14 but honestly, I feel like for $10, this is something I feel like you probably enjoy more for $10 or less. And that sounds kind of bad, but I'm just being brutally honest. I can't really... For 14 I still feel like I spent a little much for you know all the issues that it has as far as like core fundamentals and gameplay. Overall, though, I'm going to go ahead and give this game a 6.5. It does have a lot of charm to it. I did enjoy the the hybrid sections. I, You know, there's things about this game that I genuinely do like. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe. I got some other games planned. I was actually planning on doing Callisto Protocol, but, you know, they just made that free on Plus. And I kind of feel a little iffy about doing Plus games on this series. Now, I've done it in the past, but you guys let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for subscribing. I'll be back with another video soon. Peace.